Hello my dear friends, I'm sure you've all observed cases of stretch pupiloplasty being performed for small pupils, but the question is, in which type of cases will this stretch pupiloplasty actually work well? There are many causes for non-dilating pupils in a surgical scenario. They may be due to loss of muscle tone like in floppy iris, a decrease in the sympathetic tone that can occur with senile meiosis and also in diabetic patients, posterior sinicae following uveitis, and sphincter sclerosis and ball iris which results in patients with moderate to advanced pseudo exfoliation syndrome. In cases with loss of muscle or sympathetic tone, the pupil tends to be elastic which means that these pupils will dilate when you inject viscoelastic in the eye which is known as viscomidriasis. However, these pupils do poorly with stretch pupiloplasty because the pupil will tend to come back to its original size after stretch. The use of pupil dilating devices are indicated in such cases. In cases with posterior sinicae and uveitis, the pupil will dilate a little bit after releasing the sinicae. However, many times in post-uveitic eyes, the iris tends to be also atonic and floppy and in these cases, the best option is the use of iris hooks. A pupil dilating rings may not be such a great idea. Stretch pupiloplasty works best if there is sphincter sclerosis. Now this is seen in soda exfoliation. These pupils are classified as rigid and they will not dilate significantly when you inject viscoelastic into the eye. The tone of the iris musculature is also not floppy and stretch pupiloplasty will work similar to making multiple small sphincter otomies in these cases. So let us observe one such case. So this is the patient who had a grade 1 to 2 nucleus sclerotic cataract and a pretty small 4 mm pupil. The clear corneal incision was made first and then two side port incisions are made for performing the stretch pupiloplasty. I'd like to perform the stretch pupiloplasty by using two Y hooks which are known as a B-shirts hooks. Engage the hooks very gently at the pupil margin, diametrically opposite to each other and give a gentle stretch. Do not overstretch as this can lead to bleeding from the iris. So this is done at 90 degrees to each other. And once this is done, in cases of rigid pupil, there will be multiple small tears on the pupillary edge. As you can see, there are six areas where there is a small tear of the pupillary sphincter and this gives us the midriasis. Now once we have achieved the pupillary stretch, then the capsular rexis is being performed because many of these patients have shallow anterior chamber as well. We try to make the capsular rexis as large as possible. So once the capsular rexis is done, another very important step is to successfully perform the cortical cleavage hydrodissection because the ability to rotate the nucleus is going to be important to achieve successful phacoemulsification. Now you can observe phacoemulsification that is done. The pupil has been stretched only by the stretch pupiloplasty. Six areas of tear in the sclerotic sphincter has occurred. The pupil is now dilated to about 4.5 millimeters and because this is just a grade 1 to 2 nucleus sclerotic cataract, it's quite easy to perform the phacoemulsification by the direct chop technique while remaining within the center. The settings in this case is the power of 30% a vacuum of 300 millimeters of mercury and the micropulse mode. Once I have broken this cataract into multiple fragments, then the fragment removal is being performed. The sharp chopper can at this point be exchanged for a Sinsky hook, which is more forgiving and which also prevents the inadvertent damage to the anterior capsule.
in pseudo exfoliation not only is a sphincter sclerosis but also the iris has got the normal tone the pseudo exfoliative material tends to get accumulated in the iris stromal spaces sometimes it makes it boggy therefore you don't have a floppy iris the tone of the iris is also fine and the emulsification will occur in a very successful fashion Learning to pick and choose the right type of case to perform the stretch pupilloplasty is important. If the pupil is dilating well when you inject viscoelastics, when you get good viscomidriasis, it means that this elastic pupil, stretch pupilloplasty will not work well as the pupil will shut down during the phaco emulsification procedure. In these cases, like I said, you have to use a pupil dilating device or iris hooks. But in a patient with sphincter sclerosis, probably resulting from pseudo exfoliation, then stretch pupiloplasty will work best. While injecting this Technus 1 intraocular lens, found that the lens was not loaded so well, it tended to tilt. This was gently rotated into the capsular bag. The case was successfully completed. Thank you for your attention.